Hello, my name is Bob Evans from Retaining Wall Solutions. Today I'm going to talk about different types of retaining walls and the design principles of retaining walls. I'm not a structural engineer, I am a civil engineering contractor or an ex-civil engineering contractor and I know a little bit about retaining walls. But I'm going to explain in, in simple terms what a retaining wall does and how it fails. So let's look at the different causes of failure. There's five major causes of failure of a retaining wall. The diagram on the right hand side sort of shows those modes of failure and the explanation is on the left hand side. So there's five modes, overturning, burning capacity, sliding, stability and shear. So you can have a read of this slide and learn a little bit about how retaining walls fail. Well, how do we how do we build a wall to resist the failure so a retaining wall doesn't fail? First type is a gravity re retaining wall, as you can see on the left hand side. They can be made from concrete blocks or um, gabion baskets filled with stone. It's, it's based on mass. In the diagram, you can see walls from 1.2 meters to 4 meters in height. The table's been calculated by a structural engineer as a guide only. We recommend that all retainer walls are designed by a structural engineer because every circumstance is different. But this will give you an idea and a guide so we can work out some costs. The second type is a inclined retaining wall. It works on the same principles as a gravity wall, but because it's inclined and leaning into the, into the earth, we need less blocks because gravity is helping us. So this is the table of how to build inclined retaining walls. The next table is a reinforced block retaining wall. This is using the principle of a cantilever. So we've got a raft foundation and a wall and they're connected using reinforcement. The weight of the earth sits on top of the raft and that helps the design and that's how it works. So in the table here you can see walls from 1.8 meters to 6.4 meters in height and I'll explain more about the table on the next slide. So on the top line you can see the block type. So we've got either 600 millimeter um, wide blocks or 800 millimeter wide blocks at the end. So as the wall goes higher we need more um, bigger blocks and stronger blocks. The second line is the base width which is the width of the foundation at the bottom and the next line is the depth of the foundation. Um, the next two lines are the reinforcements in the raft, so you can see the different types of reinforcements. As the walls go higher, we need more concrete, more strength and more reinforcements. The pocket rebar is the vertical bar passing through the blocks. The surcharge is a load and in the photograph or the image you can see a car. The car represents the surcharge. So the car has got a weight and a load which presses down and that's what a surcharge load is. Um, so we've allowed 10 kilonewtons in this particular design. The safety of factor, factor, safety of fact, safety factor sorry, is 1.5. And the bottom line is the cost index, which I'll explain in a minute. We recommend that all retaining walls are designed by a structural engineer. This is a typical design of a cantilever wall. Um, and the tables on the other page is assuming a ground capacity of 200 kilonewtons a meter square. This needs checking out and um, the information given to the structural engineer um, to make sure that the, the wall is going to work for you. The cost index, so the line at the bottom is an indication of cost. So basically this one says 60. That means it's um, 60,000 pounds to build 100 linear meters of wall three meters high. So let me explain that in the next slide. If you re read the detail on this, this will explain how to do it. Um, it's just a simple calculation. So as I explained on the other page, it's got a cost index, a cost index of 60 a three meter high wall. 
times 100 million meters, you work out the calculation, it's 200 pounds a square meter. So this allows you to look at various types of heights of retaining walls, different methods of construction, and compare how much each one costs. It's just an indication uh, and it gives you a little bit more information. The cost index includes the cost of the blocks, delivery in the UK, the foundation including formwork, concrete and reinforcements, and the site installation of the blocks. It doesn't include any groundworks, but, but, and does give you a, an idea of the cost. So let's look at the different types of blocks. So the first blocks, block is a 600 millimeter um, wide block, the RWS type 600. This block can be used for the gravity type retaining walls. The next block is the similar, but now it's got holes in. So the holes allow the rebar to pass through them. It's a painted design, so you need to talk to me about these blocks and I'll pass you on to the supplier of the block, blocks if you want to build a reinforced wall. The next type is the RWS type 800. So this is the plain block and the next block is the RWS type 800R with the rebar. For more information, you can go to um, the website. Um, so it's retainingwallsolutions.co.uk forward slash technical downloads and you can um, find more information, drawings, there's a guide that you can download um, so you can get more technical information there. This is uh, showing you some of the walls that have been um, built in the past. Um, so you can see gravity retaining walls, inclined and reinforced block walls. If you have a retaining wall that you'd like us to look at and give you a price or a proposal, this is the information that I need. So I need to know the length of the wall, the height of the wall, the type of soil the wall is retaining, the type of soil the wall is sitting on for the ground burying capacity, and some additional information, a plan of the wall, any topographical information you've got of the area, and a site investigation report if you've got one. So all that information will be brilliant and I can really help you and decide which is the best solution for you. And finally, if you want to get hold of me or ask me any question, these the, you can see my contact details are here. So you can text or call me on that number, email me at bob at retainingwallsolutions.co.uk or go to the website and complete the Contact Us page. So until then, thanks for listening and watching. Bye for now.